We are going to be taking a look at Daryl Bevel's philosophy and what he's going to bring to the Detroit Lions statistically and by quotes. Daryl Bubble has definitely changed since he's been in the league. The league has changed from under him, and he has definitely had to change his philosophy with multiple teams that he has been with. But here's some quotes from his early years. This is a quote from his early years as being an offense coordinator in this league, and this has nothing to do with the NFL now, okay? Just listen to this. He says that basically if you're audible in more than five times a game, that means your game plan is not good. That's completely different from how the NFL works today. The NFL almost like, it almost seems that sometimes there's no game plan. Like, you are just adjusting to what the defense does. It's in college football as well now. Daryl Bevel, back when he started as an offense coordinator, that wasn't the thought. That wasn't the mind processing. And I'm glad he is not thinking that same way because I would be very upset that we signed a guy that doesn't like audibling. But he has definitely changed. Now, let me show you this quote from a little bit later in his career. So basically, he says he looks for mismatches on linebackers specifically. That makes a lot of sense. This is a guy that utilizes the tight ends, and that's why we brought in all these tight ends. We got that good tight end group because we're going to utilize them. So he looks for mismatches between the linebackers. Is there a linebacker guarding the tight ends? Is it a safety guarding a tight end? Then you can find mismatches there. And it also means a lot for your running game because usually linebackers are the guys that comes up with the most tackles on a running back. So very important to look at mismatches for linebackers. I completely understand why he does that. And he probably does that too to this day. He said with his last team that we are a running team, we're going to run the ball about 25 to 30 times a game. But now we heard Bob Quinn recently say that we're not a team that's going to sit and follow four wide receivers all game in the shotgun, but we're also a team that's not going to run the ball 40 times the game because that's just not good for anyone so i think there's kind of like a you know level playing around there i think we got to you know find a mix between both daryl bevel can't run the ball 40 times a game and i don't think he will i think that's why he's been slowly changing his mind because the game has been changing you can't exactly play the same way they used to do with five you know audibles with a bad thing but at the same time you don't have to play like everybody else we don't have to play like the chiefs because we're not built that way and if we play like the chiefs we're going to have problems if we're trying to throw the ball and have 40 points a game and have Matthew Stafford at 50 touchdown passes. We probably won't win many games because we're just not built for that. We don't have a team built for that. We're built similar to the Patriots offensively. We're built like a team that's going to control time and possession. It's going to run the ball and just control the clock like that. That's how we're built. And I think that's why Daryl Bevel fits perfectly with the Detroit Lions. Maybe a little bit of old school here, but it definitely works because a lot of defenses aren't going to be prepared for what the Detroit Lions are going to bring. Used to playing against certain offenses. The Detroit Lions are going to be very different from a lot of offenses in 2019. Now, I decided to take a look at some numbers. Now, first, let me tell you our rankings from last season, okay? These are kind of bad. They're very bad. Last season, in total overall yards, we were 23rd in the league. Um, passing yards, we were 25th in the league. And rushing yards, we were 23rd in the league. That's not good at all, okay? So now that you have that in your mind, now, you, now that you understand that, let's look at the last three years for Daryl Bevel as an offensive coordinator, okay? So in 2017, he was fourth overall, and he was 20th in passing and third in rushing. Overall, that's just a lot better than what the Detroit Lions were. Now looking at 2016, he was 12th overall, 10th in passing, 25th in rushing. Now the rushing there kind of concerns me, but not, not really. Um, you know, things change a lot of times. He's always had a really good running team. And then in 2015, he was 15th overall, 14th in the pass, and 23rd in the rushing. So you can see there are some dips, there are some 20s, but that's similar to what we are, right? But looking at this, he has been top five in rushing six times in his career. Six times in his career, top five, that's crazy. Like, we don't do that. Top half of the league is outstanding for us. I can't even think of the last time we've done that. Now, passing, he's been only top 10 twice. So top 10, right? So he's not as much as a passing guy as he is a rushing guy, and I'm fine with that. Yes, it may be more boring at times, but a win is a win. Knowing what we know, knowing that this guy is adaptable, and he's adaptable because you have to look at who he's played with. And Matthew Stafford is the main guy here because a lot of people will be questioning, well, what does this mean for Matthew Stafford? We're going to run a new offense, brand new offense coordinator. You always have to think, what does that mean for the quarterback? He was working well with Jim Cooter, we thought. Daryl Bevel has been adapting to quarterbacks all the time in different ones, and he's been doing really well with it. He has coached guys like Russell Wilson, who are completely different from guys like Brett Favre. He has been with a lot of different quarterbacks. He has adapted to all of them. He's brought his own scheme and philosophy. Everything has been changing. It's not been the same with different teams. I think Brett Favre is kind of similar to Matthew Stafford. I think skill-wise, I don't think how exactly they're going to play, but I think skill-wise, he's got a big arm. Um, he's pretty accurate. They're also both pocket passers. They're not really mobile quarterbacks. I think Stafford has been learning a little bit to escape, but he's not a go He's not a guy you want to have run the ball, okay? That's not what you want to do with Matthew Stafford. So I think things that we can expect for 2019 is a better rushing game overall whether it's by the numbers, just controlling the time possession because we can run the ball. I think overall the rushing game should be better, which actually could help the pass and open that up a little bit, especially the play action. And Matthew Stafford has been outstanding on that, let me just say that. And also Marvin Jones Jr., when he's going deep off play action, has been also outstanding. So that's great. We could also expect more time possession. We should be holding the ball a lot longer when we run the ball a lot longer. 
This is something that we haven't done in the past, but if we're going to run the ball this much, we should control time possession. Again, it's going to be ugly, but this is how the Patriots beat the Rams. They weren't pretty, but they got it done because they were able to control time of possession. And finally, like I said, we have an adaptable offensive coordinator that we may have not had in a long time. I don't think that was Jim Cooter. I don't think he was very adaptable. I feel like he stuck to his game plan once it worked, and once it was in a situation where, okay, okay Jim, they're, they're caught on. This ain't working. We got to mix it up. He didn't really know how to mix it up. Like, he tried. He didn't really know how. And I'm not going to put all the blame on him because I feel like we were trying to go on a different path with Jim Bob Cooter last season. Like, our offense was trying to be different, but at the same time, Jim Bob Cooter wasn't really an offense coordinator for that. Like, that wasn't his thoughts. So I think that kind of messed him up. I don't think he was a good offense coordinator. I'm just saying I think there was a little bit of a mix-up there between Bob Quinn, what the Detroit Lions wanted to do, Matt Patricia, and what Jim Bob Cooter really wanted to do. So that's what we can expect from Daryl Bevel's offense. Again, these aren't, like, highlights, but these are just looking at the numbers, looking at some quotes. He's definitely changed. Change. He's adaptable, and I'm excited to see what Daryl Bevel can do with the Detroit Lions. Let me hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you, Brad, for watching, and I'm out.